Aum Rupa Varnadi Kang Sarvang Vihaya Paramartha Vit Haripur Nachidananda Swarupena Vatishtate Rupa Varna Adi Kang Form, Color, etc. Sarvang Everything Vihaya Discarding Paramartavit, one who has realized the Supreme. Paripurna Chitananda Svarupena, as an embodiment of the Supreme Consciousness Bliss. Avatishtate becomes, as it were. He who has realized the Supreme discards all identification with objects, names, and forms. Thereafter, he dwells as an embodiment of the infinite consciousness bliss. He remains established as the Self. Namaste. So, one who has realized the Supreme discards all identification. Now, this is logically very simple. One who has realized the Supreme. Okay, Ramana Maharshi said, and we agree, that the Supreme, the Brahman, the Self, is already realized. Just ask anybody, do you exist? And of course, they're going to say, yeah, obviously I exist. Well, how do you know that you exist? Usually they can't answer, but we know it's because the self is self-aware. So the self is realized, even in animals, what to speak of human beings of every kind. So that's not the problem. Well, then what? He discards all identification. This is where the problems start. Because first of all, we are identified with the body, the mind, the designations, the labels, the, you know, so many names and forms, possessions, relatives, this and that, so on and so forth. Endless. So the problem is then to give up the identification. Now, how do you know or how do you recognize and how do you give up or discard this identification? Because I'll tell you from long experience trying to teach this stuff, nobody really understands what identification is. And of course, logically, it's very simple thinking that I am something other than the self, the body, the mind, the labels, the titles, you know, and all that. So even though it's fairly easy to define what identification is, how do you give it up? Well, this is a thing, you know, this is like, how do you swallow your food? Well, I don't know. I just swallow it, you know, right? So the same goes for identification. How do you give up identification? Well, either you can or you can't. And most people can't. Why? Because first of all, they don't have identification properly defined as a term. And as an awareness, they have not developed the awareness of identification within their own self. So in other words, they're unaware of their identifications. So how can you give up something that you're unaware of? 
and so on and so forth, going back to the original cause that you are not qualified for Dwaita. Remember in the very beginning when we started covering the Upanishads and so on, we made a video about qualifications. Nothing has changed since then. <laughs> Well, what happens is that people, new people, just dropping in on the channel, or even those who've been around for a while, think they understand what we're talking about, but their inability to apply it and get the benefits and get the result reveals that actually they don't. So what do you have to do? Well... We got a comment this morning on an earlier video from someone who is in acute distress due to some kind of disease. I don't know the details. The details don't really matter. The point is, if someone is in acute physical distress, it's too late. You are already burning up and, and experiencing that karma. It has come up. The fruits of some previous act, something you did maybe in a past life even, are coming true in present. So it's already too late to ward it off. It's here. It's happening. But let's say, let's just say, for example, that one knew that one was prone to or um, has a predilection towards a specific kind of disease. What can you do? Well, we all suffer from the disease of material suffering, mental suffering especially, and we all suffer from death of the physical body. So what are the things we could do to mitigate this? And the answer goes back again to the qualifications. We have to acquire the qualifications to study the science that allows us to disidentify or discriminate between the self and the non-self. Now, how do we get that skill? Huh? We have to go all the way back to karma yoga. When you're in Jagrat consciousness, here's the old chart. The appropriate yoga is karma yoga. When karma yoga matures, it leads to bhakti yoga and svapna consciousness. And when bhakti matures, it leads to raja yoga, meditation in Sushupti. And finally, when meditation is complete and one realizes the void, emptiness, nothingness, then it's just a simple step from there to full self-realization, a jatavada, in Turiya consciousness. And that's Jnana Yoga, the highest realization. So along with these realizations, one gets the skills to, well, for example, give up identification. What is the secret? Well, we've talked about it so many times, viveka, discrimination. Separating the eternal from the non-eternal, neti neti getting rid of all the non-eternals until only the eternal is left. So this is the process of Raja Yoga. But you can't do Raja Yoga unless your bhakti is complete, your devotion to God, love of God. And so your relationship with God is complete and beautiful and you have ascertained your liberation into the higher heaven. And that can't even begin 
without a good store of positive karma from performing karma yoga. Now, the neo Advaitins and a lot of the bogey yogis want to simply ignore the requirements and the qualifications. They don't follow, for example, the yogis don't follow the first two steps in yoga, yama and niyama. They think they can lead an ordinary life as a corporate slave <laughs> and practice yoga. So they simply take up asana and maybe they do a little pranayama. But nobody does the next step, which is pratyahara, withdrawal of the attention of the consciousness from the senses. Why? They don't know how. Pratyahara is simply neti neti. Huh? But you can't do neti neti until you know the philosophy, until you know the Vedanta, the Upanishads. See? So this is where they all get stuck. Okay, now I've done all this hatha yoga and I've done all this pranayama and my body is very strong and all this, but withdraw my mind from the senses? Oh, that's not possible. It's not possible because you're identified. Duh. <laughs> you identify the self with the body and the mind. So, of course, you can't withdraw from it. <laughs> this, in turn, is due to a lack of subha karma, good karma, beneficial karma, karma in the mode of goodness, sattva, which is, of course, the result of actions in the mode of goodness. And what are they? Vegetarian diet, austerity, regulation of lifestyle, performance of rituals according to the instructions of the Vedas, very important, and so on and so forth. If one does not do these sadhana items, and we've explained all this in tremendous detail on this channel years ago, you can look back or you can look in the catalog which I've linked to in the description below. And you can see all the old videos on karma yoga and bhakti yoga and raja yoga. Now we're talking about jnana yoga because we're talking about Upanishads and Shankaracharya's teachings. But in order to get this, in order to understand it, and in, especially to apply it, you have to have the qualifications. So, you know, to my poor friend who is suffering because of some disease, it's too late. You can't stop that suffering now. You should have done, gone back when you were 16 years old, 18 years old, and start performing those Vedic rituals and give you enough good karma that you can counteract it, that you can withdraw your awareness from the body and the senses. If the senses are giving you trouble, just withdraw. Go back into the self. Identify only with pure consciousness. But you see, without those qualifications, you can't do it. This is the point. So if you find it difficult to understand the topics in these videos that we've been doing lately, or if you can't apply it, if you try, you know, you sit down and you try and you just can't wrap your mind around it, it's because you don't have the qualifications. Very simple. So you have to go back, Jack, do it again, and get those qualifications, get purified from performance of karma and bhakti yoga. Sit down and meditate and develop your concentration by means of raja yoga. And then when we say something like, 
one who has realized the supreme simply rejects, simply throws away identification with the body, mind, and senses, you can go, oh, yeah, I can do that. And you just do it. Just like, you know, how do you walk? How do you stand up? How do you know when you put your hand on the top of your head that that's where it's going to end up? See? It's because you have the qualifications. You did the exercises. You made all the mistakes in the past. And now it's time to enjoy the result. So this is the benefit of earning the qualifications for complete self-realization. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya. Ha, <laughs> ha.